A warm welcome to a pod full of saints on Wednesday, the 11th of October, 2023. We've got so much excitement to look back on. Plenty of goals, anyway. Uh, with myself, David Tavner, <laughs> and over there, he's already chuckling. He's, he's still thrilled by his past two games. Jake Ellicott. <laughs> thrilled is one word. Hello, Dave. Hello, Lee. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Are these two games and results had the same effect on you, Lee? You're still bubbling away happily. <laughs> bubbling due to the alcohol, uh, Dave. But yes, mate. Yeah, it's been <laughs> they've been quite enjoyable games. But I'm sure we'll get on to that. Right. Yes, we, we will get on to it. Uh, we're starting with last Saturday's game, National League South, home to Eastbourne Borough. I think they became only the second visiting side to win two successive league matches. 3-2 at Clarence Park. It was a 144th defeat by that score. As I expect you've already checked that anyway. <laughs> Which is actually the same number. We lost 3-0 as well, funny enough. But there you go. Um, now, as you know, I'm not that bothered about results. So I could enjoy the game. And from a spectator's point of view, that was a very enjoyable game. From a manager's point of view, it probably wasn't. But um, it was the most open game we've had. Both sides had plenty of chances. I felt on balance, Eastbourne probably deserved a win. Um, but there was good points to be had. But despite being happy at watching the entertaining game, there are issues to look at. Uh, what, what about you, Jake? Uh, were you able to take enjoyment from it or does the final score mar it a little bit for you? Uh, I took some enjoyment from it, apart from the bit where they scored three goals in the second half and then last 20 minutes we didn't do anything i mean our two goals were pretty good actually i did enjoy those i will say and to be fair first half i thought this is all right not spectacular not amazing but we're actually looking to go forward with a little bit of intent and to be fair second half for the first 20 minutes we did but defensively that was where my joy disappears that defensively why especially second half it was just just a bit of a mess, wasn't it? And to be honest, it's no surprise with the injuries we've got, etc. Lots of reasons. Um, but yeah, not not the greatest afternoon, not the greatest result. And I think again, the problem is it's the calls for Sean Jeffers have grown again already, haven't they? Yeah, I'll be joining those in a minute. Um, what about you, Lee? Find a score, run it for you, and uh, if so, which bits of the performance did you enjoy? I thought, well, I share I share your view, Dave. I thought the game was was a really enjoyable one to watch. I I think I should be more upset with the result than I than I am. But I think, given the fact that we've alluded to the injuries, and you know, we're getting no consistency due to that fact. We're having to put players out out of position, and it's a sort of it's like a mend and make do sort of situation now, isn't it, for Nobby when it comes to the the defence, I thought it was very enjoyable. Um, chances at both ends, I thought we, you know, looked good going forward at times. You know, if we were given some, if we were given that penalty in the first half on Mitch, I, I think the game would have, could have changed. I think it all just hinged really on the fact that we've got people coming into defence who've not really had a real run at things so far. Naive defending from us. Good finishing from them. I think that has to be said. Um, but yeah, on the whole, enjoyable to watch. But the result, I think that's, that, that is the one fact at the end of the day that people are going to look, look at, aren't they? Yeah, we're, we're having this great run of not conceding goals in league mm. games. And it, and it happened again the first half Saturday. We thought, oh, so, OK, so we've got away with it so far. Uh, but they were getting chances. But what a great start. Fantastic ball by mm. Ryan Blackman, straight into the path of Mitchell Reese and uh, a superb finish. It gave us a platform to build on and we didn't. I thought in the first quarter of an hour, they could have at least been level, if not one or two ahead. But I thought they hit back really strongly. Um, I know you're coming on to the second half later. Uh, but again, later in that half, we hit back and we did have chances. Um, but we're going to have to hit on things defensively. Uh, it, it all comes back, I think, to the Chelmsford game where we lost Jack James and Sam Brown in 10 minutes of each other. Mm. Both went off uh, injuries. We're, we're not getting the updates as to when they're coming back from the club for some reason. We don't know what's happening with them, their fitness and whatnot. Um, Nobby had been going with a four at the back in the games leading up to that. Since then, he's gone for three at the back. Um, so he could say his options are restricted. If he lost those two, he'd already lost Ben White as well. But maybe... He could look at Ben Smith dropping him back. Maybe he could look at bringing Ryan Blackman back. 
put in one of those two in the back four and go for a back four. Give us a bit more solidity back there. He's chosen not to go. He's stuck with three. Do you think he's made the right decision or could he have maybe helped himself a bit? I think there's probably more options at centre-back or people to play in the three that at his disposal. Um, but the thing is, if you take players out of position, then you've got to fill them somewhere else. And it's, I think, changing the formation would have been a lot easier than to sort of try and move everyone around just to make do in the formation that he likes. I suppose you've got to play to our strengths. And to be fair, Tavs, you know, defensively wasn't great on Saturday. But we still made chances. And it wasn't as though we were leaking at every given opportunity. I think there's a bit of naivety there, as I spoke about previously. But, you know, there was some good finishing. And I think you've got to give credit to Eastbourne because they took their chances extremely well. They caused us problems. But it was a really good game. And I think when we're attacking, we're going to be a bit more open, playing that formation. You're going to, there is going to be op opportunities for the opposition. Um, that's a given. But what else do you do? You know, yes, you could put Blackman there or you pull out, pull out Smith, but then there's holes to fill in the middle. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think mm -hmm. when, when you start dissecting and taking apart the midfield, the core of the team, it, it just moves the problem around, doesn't it? And I think he's got more people at his disposal at, at the back who can do a good job there. You don't want to start putting people in the middle of the park to do a job. That's, that's where you need the nucleus. That's where you need the centre um, to stay consistent. And look, I do feel for Nobby, absolutely, because he's been given a very harsh hand. Um, but yeah, it was just un unfortunate we were on the wrong side of a, of a bad result on Saturday. What about you, Jay? You, you said uh, some, you expressed some concern about defence at the start of your piece. Um, so you obviously want to say a bit more about that. Also... Could Nobby have made some changes there to help himself a bit? To be fair, I mean, Ben Smith at right-back probably isn't the worst idea. We both saw him at Eastbourne, didn't we? Uh, that first appearance he made down there. And we remember we said at the time he actually looked really impressive considering it's not necessarily his natural position. But I think Lee's touched upon a good point there because if Ben Smith drops to right-back, who actually then goes into midfield? Uh, Hoddle's out. Wiltshire's, you know, got a very serious injury. We let a lad go the other week. Um, so we're really short of options in there as well, aren't we, at the minute, in midfield generally? I mean, I don't know who could really fill in there at the moment as well, unless you sort of try and tinker quite a lot. And then if you're tinkering quite a lot, you've got, you know, even more changes around the team. I think I think it does fall back to the defensive changes we've had to make and the defensive shape. And to be honest, that's why I probably wasn't too devastated with the result, because Nobby's dealing with an injury list of six, seven players now. I mean, any team in this league that has got that, unless they're Torquay or Yeovil with big budgets, they're going to find it difficult going. So I think if Nobby could have, I think he would have made changes to the team. But um, really, he had no other options. I mean, we saw De Silva come in for his first start, didn't we? I mean, up until Leiston, he's not featured at all. I think that shows the depths of where Nobby's having to drop to. And you saw the squad at the, the bench on Saturday, bar a certain Sean Jeffers, there was no one else really on there, was there? So... The options are really limited for Nobby at the minute. And as much as I think someone like Ben Smith or Ryan Blackman could do a job maybe as a fullback, I don't know if he had much of an option, Nobby-wise, to actually make those changes. Uh, the, the injuries he suffered in defence uh, are astonishing, really. Uh, and also then losing uh, Dan Bowery this week for um, yes. international duty. Uh, it's another one he couldn't have anticipated. And... Uh, I think also this season, we've expressed concern about the midfield. And Lee is right. You're taking players out there. We haven't really got the cover to come in no. to uh, strengthen it. Um, so we've mentioned it in the past, a blooming loan system. It, 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 where does he go? Because even if the injuries come back, that midfield still doesn't look strong enough, does it? But well, with, with uh, support, he's it, it, got his starting ones. Beyond that, he's got no support there. No, he, he hasn't. But I think we have got to stress that he just how unfortunate the, the situation is. Hmm. Um, it's a square pegs and a round hole sort of thing where you can take players out to sort of fit elsewhere, but then you're just going round and round in circles and you could have four or five people playing out of position rather than just one or two if you change the formation. Um, the loan system, Tabs, yes, your, your, your pride and joy. Um, <laughs> it's going to happen, I guess. But the thing is, because we're getting no updates on the injuries, we just don't know how far along 
the line we are with that. Um, but look, what else can we do? I'm not saying... What, what I would say is that the players who come in on Saturday did a good job. They worked hard. It just wasn't... It wasn't to be. It was an enjoyable game to watch. And yeah, OK, you got players coming in who wouldn't norm, normally start. Jake touched on De Silva. I don't think he started since, since pre-season, perhaps. But... Um, Mm. But that's but that's where we are, you know. That is where we are, and I wouldn't say the lads disgraced themselves by any stretch. It was just very unfortunate. No. Um, but we've got to dig in. We've got to dig in, and I think the more these players play together, the fringe players who've come in, they're going to get settled, and hopefully, it won't affect us too much going forward. Now, it's, it's funny we say about the lone players. Of course, who scored a hat trick for Eastbourne when his first yes. goal, Zach Emerson? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It came off a bench, and this is a second quick of a Mitch with his. It's an astonishing start to both halves. And so, Zach Emerson on loan from Blackpool. Um, didn't we used to have a connection up there in one way or another, I think? Um, <laughs> so, well, you do wonder how they got him. Um, so, that is this loan system working. It's not long term, of course. You still got to replace him when he goes back. But um, if you're looking for a short fix, these sometimes can work out, as we found out last season, of course. Absolutely. And to be honest, I don't think we can understate the miss as well of Michael Clark on Saturday. He's, you know, yeah. in recent weeks, he's really stepped up, hasn't he? He's he's actually really impressed. Um, and is he injured as well? Is that the sort of news we have on, on him? Um, and he's a big miss. To miss the, the defenders that we are at the minute, you know, we're always going to be, diff it's always going to be difficult, isn't it? And it doesn't show any signs of getting better with Bowie being called up to international duties, like you say, Dave. No return dates for the rest of the players. I mean, what what can we do? I suppose the only hope potentially is maybe Ben Wyatt back next, this weekend. I know he, he was having a late fitness test the last two weekends. Can he come back? But otherwise, there's not a lot that Nobby can particularly do. You'd have thought of all these injuries and lack of news. So a club would get a full-time media team sorted out, wouldn't you? David? Um, well... Ah. Move on. Uh, Dan Bowery. Um, Antigua and Barbuda. Something like that, isn't it? Um, a second international for them. Can you remember who the first one was? Oh, Antigua. How long ago would it have been? Was this? Was this? Let's, let's have a guess. Uh, Eight, nine years ago, something like that. Maybe it, ten. It wasn't. No, I was going to say Jefferson Louis, but it's not him, is it? No. It's, um, no. It wasn't Omar? I don't know, is it? No. 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 Go on. Uh, uh, a former Tottenham player, so obviously the name would roll off the tongue. Uh, Anton Blackwood. Um, ah, played, yes. played one game for us. You remember, Jane? They played one game for us, and he, he didn't play. He, he was with us for a few months. He just played that one game. And he got capped a couple of months later. Hadn't signed for anybody else, so we count him as our international. Uh, former Tottenham uh, youth and reserve player. I think he's actually <laughs> still involved in. I think he's still involved in the coaching at Tottenham one way or another. Funny enough, so he has made a career out of the game. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> so there you go. But that's what awaits Dan Bowery at the end of his career, coaching at Tottenham. Um, <laughs> what right. a time to be alive! Goodness me! <laughs> I, I suppose, Dave. One one thing is, I, we talk about the defence a lot, haven't we? But we had that. I mean, Lee mentioned the penalty. I think the penalty decision worth is worth discussion discussing. I mean, you reckon that was it? That, that was a, <laughs> that was a shocker. I'd, lo I'd lo love to know what you thought, Dave. But watching it back on the highlights, didn't seem much better. And then also, second point was um, there was that spell when we went two one up, and then the Eastbourne keeper made three reasonably decent saves and you just wonder again if one of those had sneaked in got past him or whatever again could we have been able to hold on it's, it's it was a game of fine margins wasn't it even though a lot of fans were very despondent at the end considering you know what happened it's interesting isn't it? the, the Mitch penalty I was looking through my camera at the time so I got it on so to say I didn't see it live um, but I saw it on the thing I think the camera was in close enough to really give a totally honest opinion because when it happened straight away the bloke next to me said Mitch jumped went for it um, I had to protect himself because he saw the bloke coming in or whatever so some people said it was a penalty some say it wasn't there you go it's like in um, a second goal a great goal straight by Dylan Farge tremendous strike when there's a foul on Rasula again mm. um, somebody behind goes a terrible tackle two footed tackle we watch the highlights it wasn't the bloke actually just mistimed it and he caught him with one of his legs and the referee did a great job there and letting it go, playing the advantage. And uh, that fantastic finish by Dylan. Um, 
Sean Jeff was, uh, he, he didn't start Saturday. None of us thought he would because uh, he didn't score up at Billerica. That's it. You get one chance, you're out. You got in by default at Chelmsford. You scored two goals. That's made it difficult for the manager, but uh, not scoring last week made it easier for him. If a game was as open as that against Eastbourne, it was crying out for a finisher, wasn't it? And you can't help thinking, had Sean there, he would have had a field day. Surely he would have done in a game like that. It would have suited him. Um, we've got other players who can get goals, but, you're, but Sean is a finisher. And we come on to last night, and it, 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 he will emphasise that point again then. And I think, if I'm going to be highly critical of Nobby, he could have maybe changed that back for, back line and gone for four at the back, made us more solid. Lee's right about it. He could have left us light in midfield, but we were anyway. Um, and having Sean up front for an open game like that, that would have helped us as well. But you, you, you just stick with Sean up front no matter what. Well, not no matter what, but uh, pretty much most games. Any thoughts on that, Lot? I think you have to refer to last night. Um to sort of emphasise your point for Saturday, because I think, you know, Akambi and Jeff have started last night and then Mitch come on and there were there were periods of that game when both Mitch and Akambi played really well with Sean up front. I think they complement each other. I think, you know, if there's an ideal world where you play all three of them together, great. But again, you know, that's a, that's a dream. But... Um, I think mm-hmm. there's there there's definite emphasis there that when you play Sean A and other, good things can happen. And I think that last night is is sort of testimony to that because, you know, what Sean brings to the game, it, you know, others thrive around him. We, we spoke about this before in the past. Um, would he have thrived on Saturday? Yeah, no doubt. Would he would he have scored? Don't know. Um, this is this is the enigma. That is the Sean Jeffers debate for this season. Uh, but I think if last night showed you anything, is that you, you know, class is permanent. And I think, you know, he only needed one or two, one or two chances. And perhaps the scoreline would have been different on Saturday. Mm. Uh, just to finish off last Saturday, the person who did get all those goals, Zach Emerson, as far as I can tell, he's the first visiting player National League South to score a hat trick down the park. So uh, well done to him. Quite wow. a bit of history for that. Oh. Yeah. And um well, maybe we'll see him on loan down the park one day. Right, now getting on to <laughs> last night. Um Hemel put out a very inexperienced side. They really did. That was a young side. I, I, I look at the stats, they played very few first team games, most of that lot. We had a bit more experience out there. We certainly had enough to win that game, you'd have thought. Um we did. But we didn't. <laughs> we didn't win that game. We won what happened afterwards. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Um. Anyway, what, what do you make? It's quite interesting. Again, an, an early start with uh, goal in three minutes and then them scoring even quicker at the start of the second half. Um. It's, it's astonishing these goals down the park at the moment. Another fantastic game. I really enjoyed. I really in, in, enjoyed it. And the thing is, the atmosphere was superb. It really, really was. Um. Great goals. I think their first equaliser was a really well-taken goal. I thought Sean's goal was just Sean in a nutshell. Strong, uh, fast, quick, good feet, brilliant finish. Um, I thought their second equaliser, Isifana, I thought he, you know, just all good round. It was really good goals all around. Really good game. Um, Because the thing is, those derby games, they can be one or the other. You know, they can be sort of quite sort of turgid dour affairs quite sort of edgy but last night was open some good football at times uh yeah and I really enjoyed it and I thought we were good value I thought we had a lot of the ball but again you talk about Hemel having an inexperienced side we had some inexperienced players who probably wouldn't have wouldn't have played with the likes of Jeffers and stuff before so I think they were sort of learning as they were going so I think credit is due there as well but it what does show it to me is that we've got some good young players and if they're managed right um, then they could be valuable because I think given given the situation we, we, are, we might even sort of need them as well over the next few months or so It's funny isn't it because Sean well, three minutes into the game he tracked back he won the ball back 30-35 yards out put a lovely ball 
boot it if he can be, who finished in style. It's, it's a lovely, great start to the game. After that, Sean did not have a great game. He had a poor game. But then, 12 minutes into the second half, he hit a stunning goal. Um, yeah. The power he got into that shot, it's the hardest I've seen him hit a ball. But that's what quality strikers do, isn't it? They can have a quiet game, and then suddenly they produce that. That's why you pay extra for these forwards, to turn a game for you in a split second. He would have had a second later on when uh, I think Mitch uh, got down the left, put a ball across to him. Sean didn't do anything wrong. He got the shot on target, low down. James Taylor in the Hemel goal parried it, and he did really well to get back and scramble it away. Because um, that should have been Sean, or could have been Sean a second of the night. Um, yeah, it, that's what players like Sean can do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love you to show me, uh, you know, a great collection of City strikers who played superb 90 minutes every game and got the amount of goals that Sean Jeffers did. They're very few far in between. And we had the perfect example on the other side last night, didn't we? Joe Chivano, when he with us, with us, what, he got a decent number of goals, didn't he, for us in that one season. But he had a lot of anonymous performances. He had a lot of performances that are like, oh, goodness me, what what are you doing? But then they just pop up and score. And Sean Jeffers is exactly the same. And to be fair at Chelmsford, I thought Sean had a really good performance overall. But last night, he might not have. But so what? He scored a brilliant goal, perfectly taken. Um, I think he took out maybe a lot of a lot of his annoyance maybe over recent weeks on that on that shot with the way he hit it. Very well done. Um, but, you know, I don't mind that. And I think we saw again on Saturday... You know, when there's players out there, I'd rather someone out there that can actually put the goal in the back of the net and actually find it first time. You know, that could have been a difference on Saturday. And that's why you want Sean Jeffers on the pitch again most weeks. You know, there's not many strikers in this league that, you know, don't have their off performances. So what? They're allowed to, as long as they keep scoring. I think he's dead right about Joe. He, he got to a great start of us. He got a lot of goals early on and then it, Finned out towards the end of the season. He ended up with 18 in 36. And he was anonymous for a lot of games. Um, of course, when he wasn't scoring, it stood out even more. But uh, yeah. since been playing against us, since he left, he scored three goals. So he, he keeps reminding us <laughs> of what he can do. <laughs> but, you know, that, that season, if that season had played to a completion, Jared Schifano might have ended up with like, 20-odd goals. But then, and those goals could have kept, kept us up. But at the end of the season, you'd have thought, Still wasn't a lot of great performances from a man who scored 20 odd goals and kept us up from safety or kept us safe, sorry. So it's just that is just the life of a striker, isn't it? And sometimes it's easy to overthink it. Sometimes you think about running stats, pushing and pressing, and no, they're there to score bowl, goals in and around the box. And that's what Sean Jeffers can do. And he's what two, two free starts this season, three goals in all competitions. Not, not a bad return, is it? It's funny, we're getting towards the end of, um, well, we didn't have any extra time last night because uh, Hearts FA don't like to go to bed late or something. So <laughs> um, when, when it was going into injury time, um, somebody next to me says, should, should we get uh, Michael Johnson on, stick him in goal in case it goes to penalties? Because you know they're going to score from this free kick, which of course they did. Um, well, as it was, we didn't stick Michael in goal. Oh, by the way, it's his 100th game for the club this Saturday against Farnborough. One assumes he's coming back in. Um, instead, we, we kept uh, Sam Bentley in goal and, and he didn't have to save any penalties as it turned out. Um, oh, but uh, what, what a way to end it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a lottery, isn't it? But I think the atmosphere, I've got to sort of touch on this again because... Mm. I think credit where it's due to have over 800 for a Hearts Charity Cup game. Mm. Um, you know, there was a time that I was speaking to Ian Rogers, who's the chairman of the City Trust last night, and we were, we were discussing a time when the owners come in and their thought process was, this was when we charged £15 a game. Their thought process was to charge £15 a game irrespective of what the fixture was. If it was a first team game, it was £15. Hearts Charity Cup, qualifying rounds of the cup, league, whatever. And there was a time when we had a, a Hearts Charity Cup game and there were six of us there who would pay to come in. Compare that to last night when it was like four pounds or three quid for the under 18, six pounds for adults. When common sense prevails, you can build upon really, really good things. And okay, you know, we, we had our old foe in Hemel to sort of help bolster the crowd. A little bit, but I think both sets of fans are absolutely fantastic. Actually, I was around, I was in the corner where the club shop it was, 
uh, in the second half. And I spoke to a couple of the Hemel fans. You know, they were they were lovely. You know, they they spoke English, and there were some vowels in there, and it was great and brilliant. You know, but they they enjoyed themselves, and it was a good cup tie, and it was all uh, all done in the sort of in the good spirit of things. And we come out victors, and um, they didn't take it particularly well, but that's what happens when you go to a penalty shootout. Um, but I have to say, I thought all of our penalties were absolutely fantastic. Even the one that, that we missed, the keeper made a really good save. So, uh, yeah, all good pens and uh, we we progressed to the next round. I'm glad you mentioned the price, Lee, because um, I thought £6.50, the club, for a change, did get it right mm. for uh, a lowest rank cup that we play in. And that, that helped to boost things and the kids' prices. But how, how we got so many kids down there, I just don't know. Um I think they're cruising for a bruising with some of their lot at the end. I'm not sure they got it. Uh, t- t- talking of which, it was a Hemel supporter goading our lot on that flat bit where the club just ripped out a bit of terrace early in the summer and didn't tell anyone. It, it, was, it was goading our lot. And it was you know, big I am. His girlfriend's had enough of it. She comes storming across, grabs him by the jacket <laughs> and drags him out of the ground. <laughs> His humiliation. Um, it, it's great entertainment to watch. But... Um, there you go. The crowd, yes, 839. Excellent for a Hearts Charity Cup. Maybe not quite the 3,000 we were getting back in the 20s, 30s and 40s for it. But <laughs> still, in, in this day and age, for that competition, that's a fantastic crowd. And it just shows um, promote it right, price it right. And with our crowds as we are, you will get plenty turning up for them. So it's something to bear in mind for the Hearts Senior Cup. Absolutely. And, you know, last night's result, you know, probably isn't the most important, but Still plenty of positive to take from it. At least, you know, the, the lads come away from it at the end, don't they, feeling a bit better than they did on Saturday. And there's a bit, little bit of momentum there to go into Saturday's game against mm. Farnborough now. Crowds are great. Great to get them in there for an entertaining game. Hopefully they'll come back again if they aren't already. You know, 800 off, you know, extra bit of cash as well. It's just those little positives that do help. And like we've said on this podcast, you know, how many years has it been since we've actually won something? Even if it is, you know, a hard Dave will tell cup. you. He's yeah, got yeah, that. You can see it. He's chomping at the bit. He, on, even if it, even if it is, you know, it, it, it all counts, doesn't it? And if it comes to the end of the season, we've got a little bit of silverware. That's still great to have. Better than nothing. Certainly is, Jake. Well said. I don't know. We won <laughs> something a few years ago, I expect. Oh God. <laughs> I just hope. Hopefully, they'll have sensible pricing in the next round as well in the sem- I think semi-final isn't it is it Cotts Bar Dave is that correct hopefully uh, only, only if they're playing Hitchin. Un- and, I was going to say only if they're playing under the name of Hitchin Town yes there you go so I think that's at home isn't it in the next round so again yeah. hopefully um, sensible pricing and we can get might not be as big a crowd but at least get a decent crowd because those as you said those crowds in the Hearts Show Cup they're unheard of pretty much aren't they for what 100 years <laughs> They're unheard of in our lifetime, maybe, but um, <laughs> certainly yours, Jake. Um, <laughs> it's good, isn't it? It's like the old days with Hemel, isn't it? A 2 2 draw when we had that run of five in a row. Oh, against God. Them. So, so and both sides would score late goals and uh, get the 2 2 draw. It, uh, it's brilliant. Um, you say about the rivalry between the two clubs, I don't feel it because uh, as a long term supporter it's only been going on about 10 years or so 12 years with Hemel um because they yeah. were always junior to us um bigger fish you go back to Enfield and Hendon and way before that and, and in more recent years another one from just up the road we don't mention um so I, I don't really <laughs> see them as, as bitter rivals or fierce rivals or anything just um at the moment we're in close proximity to each other because we're playing in the same division of the same league and they are, of course, one point above us at the moment, so we've got to overturn that. And we're better than with a hey. victory on Saturday away to Farnborough. Absolutely oh. seamless, seamless. Dave. Just fed into that. I mean, he's only sort of doing this for 112 pods or whatever it was. We finally got an absolutely perfect link up, mate. Well done, Dave. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, uh, Farnborough, one win in eight. That was in the FA Cup. Uh, they're not on a great run. Good time to be playing them, one would have thought. Uh, Didn't we say this last week? Uh, so <laughs> nothing can possibly go wrong playing against a side out of form. Yeah, it's mm. the same sentence as last week. Oh, dear. Did, right. Uh, Cherry Wood um, Road. That's it. Uh, well, I mean, after Saturday, I said no. After Tuesday, I have a little bit more positivity. <laughs> as you say, far, Farnborough. 
<laughs> haven't had a good run themselves in recent weeks. They also lost their top scorer, didn't they? Alfie Pavey to Woking last few weeks ago. I think he's a bit of a blow for them. And I think they've just struggled a little bit since then to sort of find their way and re-establish their plan. So, But they've got a good team. They've got a lot of National League South names in there. We know that Spencer Day, the manager, you know, he can bring in big names. And he has done it again this season. And I think, look, if you... We played them last game of the season last season, didn't we? There's a lot of last there in that sentence. And in his post-match interview, he said, you know, look at these scenes. I want this to be us next season, so I'm going to make sure. I'm going to be ruthless. I'm going to bring in players that we need to. And he has done that. And it is going to be difficult. But, you know, I think the main question is, Mark, Mark is, sorry, is that what team are we going to have out there? Because we're really running out of players. <laughs> Well, you, you can answer that yourself, actually, Jake. Um, if oh, if Farnborough win, by the way, they will go above us. They're just two points behind. Um, you mentioned they lost Alfie Pavey, which they have. They've also lost uh, a 33-year-old central defender. Uh, can you give us some news on that, Jake? Yes, Joe Partington, uh, central defender, can also play central midfield, which looks like where he's been playing there a little bit of this season, Farnborough. I think he's been their captain for a few games. They announced it this morning. I and mean, Spencer Day, the manager, had an interesting... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Breaking news on the pod. Go, Jake. <laughs> uh, the Spence Day manager had an interesting quote on their website saying, we thank him for his time with us and wish him every success, brackets, although perhaps not this weekend. So you can read what you want into that. And if it doesn't happen, then we look like fools, don't we? But I think that may indicate that he may be joining the Saints this week, potentially. You never know. <laughs> yeah, we need another central defender. It'd be interesting to see how a novice bits him in. Um, it, that would suggest Clark is not about to come back um, from his injury. Um, obviously, we lost Dan Bowery. So, um, bringing another one, it makes sense. He, he's been there since the summer, hasn't he? Um, yes. And he's, he's, he's had quite a, two spells in the Football League, from what I can recall. And, yes, uh, he joined. Like... I think looking at his, he joined Bristol Rovers for a record fee back in 2017. And then. Last season, I think he was captaining Aldershot in the National League, wasn't he? So he's decent pedigree. Um, so if it if he does come, and to be honest, it's a type of player I think think wouldn't exactly mind it coming in. I think this team does need some experienced heads, especially with so many players out. And the defence, even though I don't think it's been much of an issue this season, I don't think it's any harm if you have someone in there in defence or even defensive midfield, potentially, that just knows how to do the business at this level. I think it could be a real help. I think early in his career as well, he was at Bournemouth, wasn't he? Um, so even if you're not playing, it's a nice place to live. <laughs> well, Dave, Judith is Chalmers, this, is, bloody hell, what's going on Dave, over is this you telling us you're moving to Bournemouth? Because this would be a real shock. <laughs> you should be so lucky. Um, what do you fancy <laughs> about Farnborough Saturday, Lee? Do you think, fancy our chances there? On... Any other Saturday, absolutely. Uh, myself, uh, Matty Farmer and Reese Wynn, we went down there last season for a cheeky win, which was which was which was great. I don't know. I just think that with so many defensive frailties, I just think there's we're going to leak goals at some point. Uh, and obviously, I hope that doesn't happen. But I can see us. I, I can see us getting something out of the game. But I just think with so many unknowns going into the fixture. I can't help but think that maybe a draw is on the cards. Um, but that said, we've still got some quality players going forward. And if this fella can come in, and as Jake said, maybe he can organise those around him who are maybe out of position. And, you know, he's going to need some need some connection there. We're going, you know, but I think on the whole, it's a good place to go. We can assert ourselves if we can do that and then we can come away with the win. But it's going to be very, very tough with, with the amount of injuries we've got today. Despite their bad run, their only home defeat this season was home to Western Supermare in the FA Cup. So they are unbeaten in the league. I know it's still relatively early days, but um, yeah, that would suggest it's going to be tough. But, um, you know, we're invincible away from home, aren't we, these days? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Famous last oh, words. Dear. I mean, Lee, happy memories. Can you remember who scored that winning goal? Was it was it the winning goal that was scored down at Farnborough last season? <laughs> certain certain penalty master. Yeah, Joe, um, Joe 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 yeah, something. Yeah, 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 no, no. I don't know, mate. No, no. Who was it? <laughs> 
those we have known it, and loved, mate. I think is uh, yeah. Um, but the, you know, I think this is definitely a fixture. It could be the fixture calendar could be worse to us given the situation we 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 find ourselves in yeah. now. Uh, I mean, you know, we don't want to be sort of going to Turkey away or Yeovil away or even Hemel away with a very uncertain, unbalanced defensive line. So, yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Far, far, far from that. But I think it's an opportunity for us to get something out of the game. And, uh, yeah, positive thoughts, man. If that Farnborough game last year, we actually had a winning goal was uh, scored by Kevin Locko. Um Centre half, I think he was for uh, Farnborough. A lovely <laughs> own goal. Joe Neal scored in the first half. Of course, Joe Neal now at um, AFC Sudbury. Uh, I had a report on them last week. They looked pretty poor when they lost. Um, was it down at Hendon? And Joe, I think, was a bit quiet. Um, but uh, yeah, another game. Like we, we we take an own goal, a penalty, and I think we had a sending off last year. So if all those three things happen again this year, we'll be happy. Yes, please. So, what's your prediction then, Tavs? <laughs> Three nil loss. <laughs> uh, well, 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 no. Um, well, we're one game unbeaten, so we're on a good run. Um, <laughs> uh, well, let's go for a, a two nil. End oh of unbeaten God. home run. I know. What the heck? Even more breaking news on the pod. Oh it's my God. In positivity shocker. <laughs> well, I said we win <laughs> last Saturday, Lee. <laughs> that went down yeah. well. Mm. Too shame. Yes. Go on, anybody else want to chip in with a prediction? Go on, Jake. Uh, I'm going to go 3 2 Saints. I think it'd be high scoring, lots of goals. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to make it three out of three, Lee? No, no. I can't. I, I Sadly not, say. Sadly not. I think it's going to be a score draw. I'm, I'm going to go for two all. Let's see how we pan out with that. Yeah, that would be a 243rd to all draw, of course. My God, I mean, what a man. You are just the gift that keeps on giving, Dave. It's yeah. amazing, all yeah. these stats, man. Um, saddest, saddest get on the planet. Yeah, go on. Well, I was going to say, um, I forgot to mention this a little bit earlier on. I was in the bar last night, and uh, quite a, a tall, burly gentleman saw me from across the other side of the room and just said, all right, podcast. I thought, oh, Christ, is he a Hemel fan? And then I realised... <laughs> Then I realised he had all his own teeth, so I knew he was St Albans <laughs> lad. And he just gave me he gave me a good thumbs up. I said, and I thought, great, brilliant. Thank you for everyone um, that does get in touch with, with with us. Please do continue to email in and message us because uh, if there's anything you want us to cover or anything you want Dave to moan about, then uh, Young Jacob here <laughs> is going to give you everything you need to know. Yes, it's funny, you had a... oh, oh, go, no, go, go on, Jake. Go on. On Saturday as well, I had a couple of people just come up to you and it's so nice when they do it and they, and they say, yeah, really enjoyed that one, especially after it was another defeat, wasn't it, or something? And um, it, it's, it's good, but they enjoy it and it's nice when we get bits of loot, news like Jake there with his printing press, printing off the hot news today. And it all helps <laughs> to uh, stimulate interest. Well, you say that, but it's going to look worse when we don't sign him this week. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, when he signs for Hemel. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yes, it's at a pod full of saints on Twitter. Uh, email description is in the below. Um, and yeah, I think on that note, unless anyone else has anything else they'd like to bring up this week, um, go on, Dave. Oh, Dave's checking his stats. <laughs> Did you know, in 1937, we had seven yeah. offsides... <laughs> no, it says, it says put the dinner on 200 degrees. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this has note. descended into absolute farce. Yeah. We better go. Um, yeah, we will see you again next week. Thank you very much for watching. Come on, you saints. Bye bye. <laughs>